So now let's take a look at the six touch sensitive rotary encoders on each channel. These are going to represent the different sections of your mix window from plugins to pans to sends, mic pre control, etc. These are controlled via the mode buttons down at the bottom of the encoders. Right now they are we are looking at inserts view. And if we run the transport, we'll actually see around the encoders a 15 segment LED ring that is showing you uh, the gain reduction or the actual gate opening and closing on the expander gate as well as gain reduction at the SSL channel strip plugin. Now, these can also individually be changed to different views just by pressing the mode button so we can then pop into sends on the first four channels. And now if we look at the room send on these channels, you'll notice that we're seeing green LEDs around the encoder showing us send level with an orange LED showing us where the send is actually set at. Each individual channel can be switched into a different mode at any time. For instance, I can look at sends on one channel, panning on another, pop back into inserts on one, and even control my mic pre-controls right here from the console on another channel strip. Which is also a good thing to know that they are individually changeable, but over here in the Global Channel Strip Master, you can switch them all together at the same time. For instance, now we can pop back into inserts quickly, pop over to pan view, it's the sends view, sends view, pan view, etc. So we're going to assign an insert, and we call this local assign mode. First, we'll pick a track and an insert slot to assign on that's empty. Press the select button underneath the encoder that we want to assign, and that takes us into the first level of assignment mode, which is what type of insert we want to assign. We get to choose between TDM, RTAS, hardware insert. Also, if it's a wider than a mono track, you'll also get multi-mono TDM, multi-mono RTAS's choices. Choose what you want, hit the select button. Now it takes us down into the categories. We can now switch between EQ, dynamics, pitch shifting, reverb, delay, and so on. We want to assign an EQ, so we select that, press the select button. Now this takes us down into the plugins that are installed on this particular system. We can now scroll through all the different EQs, and you'll notice that it's actually stealing up to four scribble strips. We can actually see 24 character names and not having to deal with six character abbreviations all the time. Once we decide on what plugin we want to assign, we press the flashing select button, which will go ahead and finalize that and make the instantiation of that plugin on the channel. Now, another use for the dynamics and EQ speed buttons is a quick assign using the plugins that you've assigned inside the Pro Tools preferences as your favorite EQ or dynamics. To do this, you press and hold the EQ or dynamic speed button and press the select button under the insert that you want to assign, and that will quickly assign whatever that favorite was. To quickly clear out a insert on a channel, use the global set to default button, and then press the select button underneath the insert that you want to unassign from that channel strip, and that quickly deinstantiates that plugin from the channel. Now I'd like to pop over and assign some reverb sends. So we're going to go ahead and use the global mode switcher to quickly get over to sends. As you can see on the bottom row, we have a room verb send. Let's add a plate. So we're going to go ahead and select all the kicks and snares that we want. Select any of the channels, and now we can choose between a bus or an interface. In this case, I want a bus. And as I turn the knob, you can see all the names of the different buses come up and we want to choose plate. By selecting due to selected when we commit to it, all of the channels that were selected will get the plate reverb on it. We can, of course, turn the level with the knob, but using the select button, let's say on the three snares, will allow us to flip in a local mode those sends down to the faders. This also gives us the pan for those sends separately on the pan knobs. We can pop back out simply by hitting the sends button, and we're back to our normal volume on the faders. If you want to mute any of these reverb sends, 
the BMP button, the M is for mute, and if you wanted to quickly set those to a zero default level, you can hold down the option modifier and touch the rotary encoders and they go to a zero level. Now, this option tap works in any encoder or fader view for setting to a default or starting point section. All right, our next example of assigning a send will be to set up a Q-mix across all of the channels in our session. Now, to do this, the first thing we want to do is actually flip over to the second page of five sends. Typically, when Tom and I work on an icon console, we tend to use the first five sends for our effect sends. We then use the second five sends for any kind of bus routing or Q-mix. To flip over to this page, we'll use the global page up, page down buttons to move over to that second page. We will then invoke the do to all global button, so we do this across all channels on the console. And now, when we come up here to one of the encoders for the sins, we'll hit the set select button. That takes us down and lets us choose now between whether we want it to be a bus or an interface sin. In this case, we want it to be an interface sin, so we actually have an external Q-mix. Press select again, and this will allow us to get in and do our choices of what actual interface outputs we want. In this case, we want to use Q1. We'll press the select button, and with the do to all button invoked, it will actually create a send across all of those tracks. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do with this is make this send a pre-fader send, so it has its own independent level control that is decoupled from the actual output faders. To do this, once again, we will turn on our global do to all button, and now under our channel strip master section, we can switch the BMP buttons on those channels from being send mutes to a pre-post fader switch. Once switched over and press the BMP button, this will assign the pre-fader send across every single channel on the session. Something you probably want to do while you're not rolling transport because it will interrupt the audio. Now, once we have done this, uh, the next thing we want to do is actually take the starting mix that we have on our faders and actually copy that to the encoders themselves. To do this, we will now hold the option modifier key down either on our USB keyboard or with the modifier keys on the fader module itself. Press any one of the channel select buttons and this will then select all channels in the session. We then will go over to our software and under our edit menu command under automation we have copy to send. This brings up a copy to send dialog window that allows us to copy either current value or even automation that we have on that channel strip from volume, pan, mute, or low frequency effects information to any one of our 10 sends. In this case, we want to copy it to send I, select that. We hit OK, and this will now uh, copy all of our volume information from our main channel output to that actual send. Now, to manipulate this Qmix better from the actual console, each row of encoders in the channel strip master section has its own flip button, which will come up to the row that has the Q1 on it, hit the flip button, and that will actually take and flip down our Qmix to our faders. One thing to note in this section is that it actually will take what was down here on the actual faders themselves and do a true flip up to the encoder. So you still have access to the channel name and volume of that channel on the encoder. Once we have the Qmix flip down to the faders, we can now make adjustments down here for the actual uh, talents Qmix. And we can now flip back and forth between our main mix that we hear out of the control room monitors and the Q mix that is in the talents headphones. One of the things that you might want to do at this point is maybe take some of the actual channels out of uh, the talents Q mix. And to do this, what we'll do is we'll come back up here to the switch mode button, switch back from pre post fader to mute, and now. The BMP buttons on the sends now are back into a mute mode, so we can actually come down here and mute several of these channels while they are still in a pre-fader mode. 
you will also note that the LED light above the BMP button is lit for both the M and the P, showing that both of them are active at the same time. Right now we're looking at those inserts. Uh, I guess what we'll want to do is solo those out right now so we can kind of hear them by themselves. So we'll just press the solo buttons on those six tracks, run play, and we can kind of listen to what's actually going on right now. Hear the bleed and uh, with the raw tracks and everything that's going on there. So the first thing we want to do maybe is kind of zero in on the main kick track and start adjusting the gate to where it's going to actually work. So let's go in and unsolo everything except for this main kick track. We'll then come up here to the expander gate that's on that track. Let's unbypass that and let's dive down into that and start editing that particular plugin right there from the channel strip. Now the first thing I want to do is come up here to the one of the top encoders and adjust the range knob to where we actually get that to start kind of closing up. Now you can actually hear it closing up. We're actually seeing that game reduction meter, how much game reduction we actually have on that. Now we can adjust the threshold to actually where we want that to kind of start grabbing hold and opening up that gate. Now, right now it's, it's not catching much of the attack of the kick drum. So if we come up here to the attack knob and we adjust that down, Hear that really start to open up nicely. We'll make that really short. And then let's lengthen out our release a little bit here on this knob. So we get it to open up and stay open just a little bit longer, about 400, almost 500 milliseconds. So let's bypass that and see where you were. All right. So you can hear all the bleed and everything. Put that back in does a nice job of cleaning that track right up. Now, if we go ahead and pull the solos back in for the other three kicks and go ahead and turn their gates on, everything is now nice and clean. And clean. Very good. All right, so from there, let's go ahead and add in the SSL channel strip plugin. Which has some compression and EQ. Right. You can hear things really start to to uh, get nice and fat there. You can actually come over here. We do, uh, went in to the parameters on the channel strip for that, on that main kick drum. And I can actually adjust the EQ right here, the low frequency gain. Let's actually back off a little bit of that low end on that kick drum so it's not so tubby sounding. And then we'll go back out there. How about we add the snares in now? All right. Let's go ahead and bring their gates up. And let's go ahead and add in their processing on their channels. Now, we're in a good place. Things are starting to kind of shape up. Now, we do have a third plugin that's actually before the gate called an SPL Transient Designer. And if you look up here on this row of encoders, you'll see that the font has been reversed. Right now, it's indicating that plugin is inactive. So for us to quickly activate those plugins, what we need to do is hold down the Control and Command keys uh, modifiers and then press the select button underneath those encoders and that will actually then go and turn on and activate those plugins. Excellent. Now the next step is let's move over and go to our sins page and let's go ahead and unmute the room reverbs sins. Okay now we'll do a sort of a where we started from and where we are with the sends and the inserts together. All right, so if we come over here back to the uh, inserts view, we can use the master bypass buttons to bypass all of the plugins on the track at one time, so. And I'll mute the sends. All right, so what we'll do is uh, do a before. And after. Before after and then unsolo put it back in the track just shows how easy it is to get around to these different views being able to see what's going on edit all of this and control it all from the encoders of just the channel strips so to switch from sends view now we're going to go ahead and take a look at io view on the console 
So you simply go over here to the global section and hold the sends button down for more than a second, and it pops you into the input and output view, much like you'd see in your mix window. Hey, Tom, this is a new feature in Pro Tools 8, correct? That is correct. Uh, to go ahead and assign an input, you simply hit the select button, much like you do with a plug-in or a send, choose your bus or interface, and then dive in one more level and choose the input number that you'd like. Uh, same thing goes for output. If you want to change one that already exists, simply hit the select button again, make your change, and commit it. At this point, you may want to control mic pre's. Uh, we have mic pre's on the first eight of our console, so I can go ahead and hit the mic pre button on those channels, and on those first eight channels, I have dedicated mic pre control for gain, source, mic, line, or DI. I've got impedance and all my other controls for my mic pre. The benefit of going with the mic pre with this console is that it is saved with the session. So you can save all your mic pre settings, come back another day, and they'll be recalled. Not only can you use our particular Digi Pre for this, but there are a number of third parties out there that use this protocol as well. So you can mix and match flavors. You have choices also from Grace, Millennia, Aphex, and so on. Also, the system can handle from 8 to 72 remote controllable mic pre's that you can have online at any given time as part of the system.